In painting, I'm a great believer in actually trying things yourself that you read about because the author that wrote it may not have tried it themselves. It could be that it works, but it might have slight variations. So I always believe that if you read something, have a go at it and see how it actually performs. With this in mind, I've decided to make a series of short videos for the site um, whereby I intend to try out different methods and, and techniques that I've read about but I've never actually seen and I've never actually tried myself. This first video is called Onion or Garlic and it's called that because uh, the problem that I'm dealing with is an oil painting like this one that has been left to dry for several weeks. When I come to paint on it, if I'm using glazes and I've got a wee bit too much to look of linseed oil or turpentine in it, it will tend to curls and the oil separates because of the hardness of the surface I'm painting on. So with this in mind, um, I looked for different solutions to it and historically people have recommended different things. Um, some people simply just coat it with a clear coat of linseed oil. But the two for main forgers of the 20th century, Eric Corbin and uh, Tom Keating, uh, both recommended same, a variation on the same thing. One recommended onions, the other one recommended garlic. So with this in mind, I thought I'll try taking this painting here, which has been drying for several weeks, and I'm going to rub part of the surface with garlic, and I'm going to rub the other part of the surface with an onion. Then I'm going to apply a light white glaze to it and see how the adherence goes, whether one's better than the other. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so here we go. We have an onion and we have our clove of garlic. So I'm going to take, I presume the garlic clove, you would crush a wee bit so that you would release some of the oil. And then I'm just going to do this area up here. Round about the hat and the hair. I can actually see a thin film of oil and actually bits of garlic as well going onto the canvas. But well, it's certainly given a very sticky surface. And then I'm taking the onion and I'm going to do the other half of the face here. The onion seems much more fluid, it slides over the surface much, much easier than the garlic. And it's drying slower than the garlic. Right, next I'm going to mix up a mid-white glaze, sort of 50-50 transparency, a heavy rice paper, and I'm going to put it over these two parts and see how it adheres. Okay, now I've mixed up um, uh, as I say, a sort of 50 50 transparency white, which I'm going to apply to the two areas. And then, first, I suppose we should try it on a dried area down here. And I'm getting some crumbing that's happening round about there where the paint's separating. If I try up here where I put the onion, a much, much softer application, much, much better. It's almost the surface that's been treated with the onion has taken a much less paint off the tip of the brush as opposed to I'll film some close up shots here of the different areas and then here we are on the garlic area I would say it's stiffer. The 
I would say the garment to the application, application is much stiffer to put on, um, just as the onion was more fluid in the way that the onion ran over the surface. Similarly, I would say the surface when you're painting on it, the paint slips over the onion applied surface much easier. Um, I think I would probably go for the onion um, out of the two mediums, but that certainly makes a major difference um, from what you can see here. So there you go, onion or garlic. Personally, I'd use onion. Um, while I have this canvas up and I've got the painting on the canvas for showing the onion and garlic, um, I'll just illustrate another point. One of the things that you'll hear me say continually through videos is that uh, classical painting is probably the most forgiving form of painting because anything you can do you can correct without any problem. Provided the layers you're working on are dry underneath, you don't have to worry about destroying any work that you've already done. Now, here I've put on this white here. To take it off is very simple. All I need to do, I'm going to do is take off the paint that's, the excess paint that's on the canvas. And to do this, I've taken a small cloth and I've slightly dampened it with turpentine. I can do this because this particular painting has, I know the surface has been drying for months so it won't do it any damage. Um, anything you have don't get near it with turpentine or white spirit, just use a clean cloth, go and take it off, um, provided the paint hasn't dried fully, you shouldn't have any problems at all. And then, just give it a quick clean off. And this is one of the keys to painting with glazes and building up the layers in that you enhance each layer that you build upon as opposed to um, risking anything by painting over it. If you don't like what you've done, you can then just go back, wipe it and take it back to where you started work that.